that's me. Um, I'd firstly like to make my acknowledgements. Obviously, we've had lots of people involved in this work through the time. And I'd also like to acknowledge the public, the public that have listened to us, that have asked us questions, that have challenged and that have got involved. Basically, this is what we're doing. We're wanting to reduce the threats to our awesome freshwater places and species. And we really do need to emphasise that. We can't always focus on these are the bad guys. We've got to say, this is what's awesome about New Zealand. This is what's awesome. This is what we're looking after. These guys that live there. And we really need to raise awareness of these guys that we're looking after because most of them are camouflaged. Half of them come out at night and most New Zealanders have never even heard of them. So we really need to try and focus on what's good and what we're trying to protect. Woo, I'm a bit agitated now. I'll calm down in a minute. So this is Doc's involvement through the years. Basically 99, a few Doc dudes got around and they thought, holy crap, public awareness is actually really important in controlling the management of any pest. The New Zealand Biodiversity Strategy came along in 2000 um, and that gave agencies a mandate to prevent and manage pests that posed a threat to freshwater biodiversity. This is huge. There's been such an enormous focus on terrestrial biodiversity until now. Big trees, pretty birds. This is awesome. We've got fresh water in there now. Unfortunately, the South Island koi carp and gambusia populations were found in the, for the first time in the, the top of the South Island, which and so that was like a huge negative. They'd not been known from the South Island before. So in 2001, we got some dudes from Aussie as well as New Zealand, had a bit of a hooey for a few days, I think it was, um, in Hamilton. We worked on a national program. It was a lot of focus on um, the biology and the management of the species. Um, they didn't touch so much on public awareness. But from that, we did develop our national public awareness program within the department. We got sorted out our key messages, our key audiences, and some of the materials. 2004, the National Aquatic Pest Awareness Group came along because we realised that interagency work is vital. Agencies need to work together and they need to have a common theme. It gives strength to the message and we had common, um, common signage and things that we used. 2006, at the time it was MAF, but of course now it's MPI. They sort of subsumed that role and it, I'd kind of argue it's died away a little bit, but that's beside the point. Um, 2007... DOC then worked more on its own internal strategy. That was um, something that Tash mentioned. That is still a draft document. Pisses me off no end. 2014, so the work continues in the department. And I'd really like to focus a little bit on some of the work that we've done with a focus on Canterbury, because that's what I'm more familiar with. Some of the materials that we've used um, and some of the sort of groups that we've targeted. Um, this was an early poster that was made. So the key thing with our public awareness is getting those messages really clear. And this is quite a good example of this post, a really clear message, they're unwanted, that's what they look like, why are they bad, couple of key bullet points, stop the spread, who cares, doc and fish and game. It's not only doc, ooh, I nearly swore them, saying, um, going on about something, it's, you know, it's other people, and, and that's getting your audience, you want to think, who's your audience? <coughs> You've got a wide audience, so we want to try and target as many groups as we can. Of course, um, pest, um, goldfish dumping's been mentioned a little bit, so we went down the sort of cartoony way with this poster. We had an accompanying fact sheet, which held a little bit more information for people. Um, in the latter years, I was involved in developing these. Um, these I've made as these screens, and we've also got them as flags for using outside. It can be really hard. A lot of material is made for inside events. We do outside events as well. I'm a little bit really focusing on what the heck these guys look like in the real world. Um, and we also brought in the weeds. Um, ever since we started the work in 2001, we have done weed surveys in conjunction with our pest fish surveys um, because you do often find them in the same place. So we made these as um, resources that could go together or they could stand alone depending on what your um, talk was about. <coughs> and this horrifically blurry brochure is actually quite a good being blurry because you can see how the key message stands up at the top, stop the spread to protect our waterways. Those are the pests at the top, there's a crap looking waterway that's been destroyed by some pests and a wee bit of a tick list down the side so it makes the brochure a little bit more interactive. What am I? I'm a waterfowl hunter, what should I be doing checking my dog, my boots? 
my everything that I've used. Am I a drainage contractor? At the top, do I have to check my digger? So it brings in lots of your different target audience and makes it a little bit interactive. And again, who cares? Holy crap, half the country care. There's a lot of agencies involved in that brochure, including, um, we've got the iwi on that one as well. So they're not just government and weed busters, it's actually a non-government organisation as well. Um, this has been quite a handy little resource to use for some of our displays. It's got a picture, it's got a, it's actually a drawing rather than a, um, a live picture of a fish. Um, I wish to hell I could draw that well. Again, just a few key bullet points. How did it get here? Where's it found? What does it look like and why is it there? Just targeting people and on those sort of things. Um, this is probably one of my favourites. Someone got some really awesome photos of fish. Um, I made this as uh, some people that were doing some work. We wanted them to keep an eye out for rud. Because, you know, most people aren't going to walk up and see a rud lying on a measuring board. They're actually going to see it swimming in the water, and this is what they're going to see. Again, those few key points at the top about why they're bad. And a local contact person, really handy to have a local person. This is people we're talking about. We've got to get people involved. Of course, you do have to remember, if you've got a local contact person, they can become out of date, particularly when you go through a restructuring and they're made redundant. <laughs> Signage, really good signs, eh? Obviously, you don't want to walk up, go up to a waterway and there's 20 signs, because that's just going to drive you crazy. So you do have to think, where am I going to put my signs? Is the landowner going to have them there, whether it's private, council? Uh, do I want it near a road? What are the transport authority going to say? Don't spend thousands of dollars making a sign to point you can't put it anywhere. And keep it simple. It's colourful. Colours are brilliant. It's eye-catching. The message at the top, stop the spread. What the hell are we stopping? We've got a weed, we've got a pest fish, a couple of key points about why it's bad. A couple of key points also about what you can do to help, and that's really important to get people involved. What are we trying to protect and how can they help? And again, who cares? Quite a few people care, as it turns out. I like to, I'm a hands-on person, I like to get involved. So when I do displays, I like to make fun things. That top left thing is a game. There's pest fish hanging off there and there's native fish hanging off there. And the goal is that you knock off the pests and you keep the natives. Really good learning tool. Again, not many Kiwis know about natives. You've got the kids involved, you're talking to them. Adults will love to ask you questions when they're not surrounded by other adults and feeling intimidated, so you can really get a big audience there. Um, the, other, the sign is one that we made. We use it at displays. We've also used it at events when there's been a boat ramp or whatever. Again, the message is clear and a few key points about what people can do to help. Life-size fiberglass models. Wicked, man. People just don't understand how big a koi carp can get, particularly in the South Island. They might, they might have heard of some of our kaigapu or whitebait species, and then you show them how big a koi carp is, and they're just astounded. Life-size models are awesome. Unfortunately, hideously expensive. You can't pass them around a classroom. So I, got, I made some cushions. I got our CAD guys to turn the images around. Again, these are those stunning drawings. So the fish is on both sides. Life-size, and it's stuffed, and we can pass them around. The key thing with the koi is the little barbels. I sewed some wool on. Again, you've got to have enough realism, but you can pass it around, kids can touch it, adults can touch it, people can get involved and engaged. Oh, crap, hang on. Colouring in sheets, little activity sheets, and giveaways. Who doesn't want a float to stop their keys from getting lost in the lake? Their favourite torch or their favourite knife, it doesn't just have to be keys. The key message, protect our waterways, stop the spread, and then that sort of interactive little tick sheet on the back. Have I cleaned my boating gear, my fishing gear, my vehicle and my trailer? Gets everyone involved. So if you want to do an event, you can put up a tent and have a display. Don't put all the posters you can find in the office up at your display. People will get really confused. Make your key message really clear. Some really good information and brochures. Make it look a bit pretty. Have some plants and some rocks around. We actually had some live rud at this display. It's really awesome to have live fish at a display. You can either have live pest fish to show people what they look like, or live natives. Jesus, I'll carry a bucket of mud fish around with me all over the place just to show people what some of our beautiful endangered species look like. And this was a joint, most of our displays are joint. This was a joint one with Ecan. As you can see, it was the Ecan tent. And we also do stuff with um, Fish and Game and with the council. 
um, again, it's sending out that message. It's not who says it, it's what you're saying. Sometimes you don't have time to put up a tent, bugger it, just drive up in your vehicle, put up your message, get some things out. People can have a look at this. Oh, how do I clean my fishing net? You've got some stuff you can show them. You can get in there. Never be afraid to get wet and muddy. I always take a change of clothes. Kids, oh, kids are the best, aren't they? You just get down on the floor and you show them stuff. This was a wicked thing, this bit here on the right. Um, it was brought in for the white bait connection. We extended our white bait connection and our um, Cody up there, she got all these different types of fabric. And the kids get down on the floor and they make a waterway. They put the water down, they put the riparian plants, some rocky substrate, put some native fish in there, and they're actually building a healthy waterway. They can see what it needs. And then they start putting the pests in and they put a bit of rubbish in and then they talk about what happens. And it's a really awesome hands-on thing for the kids to do. And also sometimes you can get parent helpers. Um, in the, the 2001 programme when we started, we made a lot of fact checks. We also developed a schools programme, which um, Vicky here is demonstrating, similar to the on the floor thing, only it's water. Classrooms don't really like water on the floor. As I discovered, it's take more towels with me. But you get an aquarium and we set it up as a healthy waterway. We put some rocks and plants, some native fish, plastic ones, not real ones, obviously. We don't want to overstress them. And explain about it. And then we talk about the pests and ask the kids question. What do you think is going to happen if we get some rud in there? And they go, oh, there's not going to be any plants left. There's going to be no oxygen. There'll be no bugs. You put a little bit of dirt in there. So what's going to happen when the koi get home? You put a bit of dirt and then what happens? And the kids just, they can really associate with this. This was actually a homeschooling group, which was brilliant because, again, we had adults in a non-threatening environment. And they asked us lots of questions and adults got really involved as well. Although well, you have to be careful, sometimes they try and dominate. Um, so you do have to kind of remind them it's for the kids. So we adapted the inside school program to run it at a waterway. So we did the demonstration explaining about what's in the water. And then, you bet it, we got on there and got wet and muddy and we got the kids in there. And they just love, kids just love getting into water. Looking at tiny little bugs. Looking at little fish. They'll find a, a spider and half of them will scream. But you just you show them how awesome it is. And you just, it's really cool. I love it. It's so cool. Anyway, basically, this is what the crux of my message is. Public awareness. Get your key messages sorted out. They've got to be simple. They've got to be clear. Use local examples, particularly when you're making material. Don't have a photo of some lake way up in Northland when you're talking to people on the west coast of the South Island. They just won't really associate it with it as well. Highlight what you're trying to protect. Show those awesome pictures of our, our beautiful environments, our stunning species, and they are stunning. Target it to your audience. When, I go, when I'm talking to a, say, forest and bird, for example, I'll focus a lot on that biodiversity value and what we're trying to protect. When I'm talking to a fishing group or the Fish and Game Council, I'll focus a lot more on how the impact of the pest fish is going to impact on their fishing resource, how it's going to muck up the water for the kayakers if I'm talking to a sports group. You really target your message. Active as well as passage. Get in there. Ask people questions. Get them involved. Get activities as much as you can. Use people that know their stuff. You know, I mean, look, you must have some crazy buggers in your staff that can just get out there that are really enthusiastic. Most of us freshwater people are really passionate people and we just want to get out there and talk about it. There's no point in having someone standing there giving someone a sermon. It doesn't matter how interesting their message is if it's not given in an enthusiastic way. And that's genuine enthusiasm too. People can bloody tell the difference. Join with others to, to send a really strong message. Other agencies, community groups, all kinds of people that have got the same goal. Do get everyone involved early. Things will take time. If you're wanting to make a resource, find out. There might be someone in the other part of the country that's already made a similar resource. Um, that brochure that I had, the, the blurry one with the tick list on the back, that was actually, um, a, had originally been designed in Wellington and we just targeted it more to Canterbury. Um, and also, get everyone involved and see what you can do. You might have set formats, you might have things you, you, know, things you have to tick off, consents or whatever, especially with signage. And you won't convince everybody. Things take time. We can't expect things to happen instantly. And you'll be talking to a fishing group, and some of them, I mean, we have a huge course angling contingent in Canterbury, and some of them will never, ever believe that rud are bad for our environment. 
that's fine, that's their belief. They're passionate about their fishing. You can't knock someone for being passionate about something, but then you just need to work out how you can work together with that, which is what we've done with Fish and Game. We've done a lot of relationship building, and we work with the fishermen, and um, they've brought in some voluntary things in some of their competitions so they don't get points when they catch the piece of fish. So you're trying to discourage them, but you're just never going to convince everybody that's just life, really, and you have to accept that. And don't get pulled into an emotive argument. You know, sometimes you just get that tosser that's just in your face. All you do is you state your facts, and that's really all you can ever do, and you might just have to walk away. Walk away. It's not like 30 seconds, unfortunately. That's me, really.